Welcome to World History. Today we're going to continue talking about the forces that the French Revolution unleashed, focusing today on the idea of nationalism. As we hopefully remember, nationalism is a force in which a group of people with a similar history, culture, language, uh, ideas, sometimes ethnic identity, unite together and attempt to uh, push for their collective interest. And so today and tomorrow, we're going to be looking at the idea of the rise of the nation state, which is this idea that a nation should have a state, should have a country that helps push for their interest. The French Revolution really expanded this because people looked at the French nation that the French Revolution had created and saw the amazing power and opportunity that that had laid out. And they looked at their own people and said, man, I would like to have that for me. So today we're going to look at the factors and the barriers preventing Italian unification. We're going to evaluate and we're going to evaluate the strategies of Camillo de Cavour and uh, Giuseppe Garibaldi in pushing for Italian unification. And so uh, let's dive in to Italian unification. As you hopefully remember from previous lectures and from last semester, Italy's, Italy and Italians have been important for a long time. Obviously, Rome united the Italians and eventually created a massive empire for them. But after the collapse of the Roman Empire, the Italian peninsula was fractured into city-states. These competing city-states uh, uh, were responsible for some of the amazing accomplishments of the Renaissance. But as we talked about in absolutism, as countries and kings grew more powerful, the fact that these city-states were so isolated and fragmented made them easy prey for the growth for the growing kingdoms like Austria and Spain as these larger more uh, powerful nations started to take over. And so Italy was carved up by a bunch of different empires. And of course, these empires had no interest in the Italians uniting together because they were much more interested in, the, in keeping control over those areas. But the revolutions of 1848 led to massive chaos throughout Europe. And so for many Italian patriots, this presented an opportunity. Specifically, after the fall of Metternich, when Austria was in chaos, Italians in, the, in the, the Italian city of Milan, that was part of the Austrian Empire, rose up and tried to declare themselves independent. They, rose, they uh, raised the Italian tricolor flag that we see here, sort of mirrored after the French Revolutionary flag. And they tried to basically declare themselves independent and then tie themselves to a more powerful Italian kingdom known as Piedmont Sardinia. This kicked off what's called the First Italian War of Independence, where these patriots convinced the king, Charles Albert, of Piedmont Sardinia that the time had come to start trying to unite the Italian people together. And so they united under Charles Albert's banner, declared him uh, their king, and started trying to build a united Italy. Obviously, the Austrians were not too thrilled with this. And once the Russians helped them put down the Hungarians and they reestablished control over their empire, they raised a massive army. Austria is, after all, one of the five superpowers of Europe at this time. They put in command a guy named the Field Marshal Radetzky. And he proceeded to march in and absolutely crush the Italians, ending their attempt at independence. Charles Albert was forced to uh, give up his crown, and he had to promise to never try to unite Italy again. And so, to many Italian patriots, this clearly demonstrated the weakness of Italy and convinced them that we need to go a different path. The main architect of this new path is a guy named Camillo di Cavour. He was a noble and was prime minister for Piedmont Sardinia. He thought that building a cohesive Italian identity was important to try to create this united Italy. Italians needed to emphasize their similarities and start referring to themselves as Italians as opposed to Venetians and Milanese and, uh, and uh, citizens of Naples or, or citizens of uh, or Genoese. And so by emphasizing their Italian heritage, he could start trying to tie them together. And he also believed that Italy must tie themselves or get the help of some of the great powers and play them off each other in order to try to unite and push for uh, greater rights for Italy. 
And so, for example, he's going to get involved in the Crimean War on the side of the British and the French in order to try to get them to recognize and to give Piedmont Sardinia the right to start annexing more territory. He also, of course, is going to really push this idea of Italian nationalism, de-emphasizing the differences between Italians and emphasizing the similarities, as we already said. So Italian soldiers go and fight in the Crimean War. And in the aftermath, now you've got foreign aid. And he is allowed to declare what is called the Kingdom of Italy, making the king of Piedmont Sardinia the king of this new thing that's going to be called Italy. And so with that, he is able to annex the region around Milan and to start pushing eastward, building a larger Italian kingdom. This foreign aid, of course, was part of the aftermath of the Crimean War. The Austrians did not appreciate the Italians coming in and trying to take away some of their territory, but because Italian soldiers had fought with French soldiers in the Crimean War, Cavour was able to convince French Emperor Napoleon III to give troops to help defeat the Italians. And so that solidified their control over northern Italy and led to a pattern of Cavour tying himself to greater powers, getting involved in conflicts, and then when those powers won, getting their help in expanding his Italian kingdom. Another example of this is that after the Seven Weeks War, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, Piedmont Sardinia gives aid and uh, dist partially distracts Austria as Prussia is crushing them in the Seven Weeks War and afterwards gets permission to annex the city and region of Venetia or Venetia and the city of Venice, which uh, helps complete the northern unification of Italy. At the same time this is happening, the second great Italian unifier, Giuseppe Garibaldi, is trying to raise a peasant army and conquer Sicily and southern Italy. Garibaldi was a revolutionary. He was much more in the radical mindset, whereas Cavour tended to be quite conservative. And he had fought in previous wars for independence, both the revolutions of 1848 and the Latin American revolutions that we talked about earlier. So he was very well versed in how to run a guerrilla campaign, how to raise an army from the people, and how to uh, fight against superior, more organized military forces. At the time, the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, uh, which contained southern Italy and the island of Sicily, was controlled by the, by the Spanish Bourbon dynasty. But as you hopefully remember from our other lectures, Spain is a, a pale shadow of its former self. Far from the empire that used to span around the world, Spain has now been crushed by the French repeatedly and has lost all their colonies, and so their ability to respond was somewhat limited. Garibaldi and his followers, known as the Red Shirts, on account of the red shirts that they wore, were able to first take the city, take the island of Sicily, and then launch an assault on the mainland. These peasant armies were incredibly effective and helped to complete the unification of Italy by solidifying the control of the southern part of the Italian peninsula. Cavour and Garibaldi then decided to unite together because although they had their massive political differences, much like Iturbide and, uh, and Vincente Guerrero before, before them, they, they shared a vision of a united Italy free from foreign powers. And so they launched an assault. They launched an assault on the territory that they had not previously controlled, namely the city of Rome. They were able to capture it. And with the, uh, with the destruction of the papal states and the uh, blessing of the pope, who didn't really have a choice, they are now able to create the united country of Italy. And so here we see Garibaldi helping King Victor Emmanuel II put his metaphorical foot in the boot. And now we've created a united country called Italy, where Italian people can unite their resources together in order to make sure that their interests are protected. So hopefully you can explain why Italian unification didn't happen before this point. And then, of course, your other assignment is to compare the strategies of Cavour and Garibaldi, noting the various strengths and weaknesses of this strategy, and coming to a conclusion on who you think was the most influential.